So I've got a tweet here. This one's from uh, Michael Eisen. Uh, he's sort of the he's the editor in chief of a very big sort of journal. You know, so they where lots of scientific papers get published. And he said, "What is the most overhyped animal?" And he said, "Sea elegans. They wiggle forward. They wiggle backward. And occasionally they <clears throat> uh, they have sex with themselves. And that's it." <laughs> what I mean, is this? I mean, fly larvae does everything that sea elegans does, but better, if I may say so. And then it turns into a fly. So it's this a worm. Yeah. So this might seem a little confusing to you. But what C. elegans is, it's a kind of worm that we do a lot of scientific studies on. But this tweet started a war on Twitter. Right. So, so this, 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 this went out and suddenly everyone that, um, everyone that studied C. elegans was rising up against the people that studied um, Drosophila, so flies. So basically, worm scientists and fly scientists were having a war this week on Twitter. So cool. odd. So there's C. elegans. They're nematodes. It's like a type of, they're, they're round worms um, or thread worms. That's what a nematode is. Uh, quite a small worm that we use for a lot of scientific studies. And it's really good because um, it's non-hazardous, it's non-infectious, it's non-pathogenic, and it's non-parasitic. So you can pretty safely work with C. elegans. Um, it only grows up to about a millimeter, which is like oh, tiny. Pathetic. Yeah, tiny. <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it lives like all over the world in like rotting, with like in rotting veg and soil and stuff. Um, and we use it a lot for science. We use it to study sort of um, how things grow and develop mm. because it's um, because it's kind of even got um, a sort of nervous system and a brain, mm. um, obviously super primitive. We can study that and sort of make inferences for how the human, like humans develop and how our human uh, sort of nervous system works. Um, and because it's got a whole sort of reproductive cycle, um, it, we can we can kind of study a whole lifetime, and we can study um, we can study sort of uh, diseases or genes using C. elegans. It's sort of a model organism, uh, and it, it's really good. It's fantastic. That's a really easy pet, right? Yeah, it's like I it's, guess so. It's like the equivalent of like it's the science equivalent of sea monkeys. I guess I was just thinking yeah. about sea monkeys because yeah, yeah, they're so easy to keep as pets. Exactly, I, mine yeah. never grew. <laughs> really? I tried. Re I don't know what I did wrong. Yeah, I got some. I was really excited, and nothing happened. Yeah, I feel like they must. They, like, they must be dead if they're being transported in packages like that. Do you know what I mean? I don't even know. <laughs> like, I don't know how it works. <laughs> that's so. We've just taken an animal. We've like it put it in a little crazy. package, and it's like, okay, we'll send that around in like like seeds in a yeah. bag. But yeah, so C. elegans, absolutely fantastic, right, for studying. Another organism that we also use to study on a lot uh, is Drosophila, which is a fruit fly. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're good though. I've worked with Drosophila, uh, Drosophila before, um, in they're uni. Good colleagues. Yeah, you yeah. know, they're very smart, very intelligent. Uh, but they they're slightly bigger. They're about three millimeters in length. Mm. Um, and they like they've got a very short lifespan. I think it's only like a f about a few weeks. Um, they can lay like thirty to fifty eggs per day. They're taking over the world. Well, no, they don't like that. I feel like they should be if they're laying that many. <laughs> yeah, per day. what the hell All is happening? <laughs> well, think about it. If you're a fly. You're, you've, you've got two tactics in like, you've got generally got two tactics when it comes to making offspring. You can either make one and mm. like protect it, mm. or you can make lots and Just be like, we do, it's generally. like, yeah, you throw what you throw yeah. enough at the wall and you know, one of them is going to stay. One of them's going <laughs> to like, survive. You're saying survive. they don't care for each individual fly? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you had that many children, would you be able to care for all of them? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> 30 to 50 a day. For like the what the two weeks of your life, start a little cult, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be quite fun. Start a whole country. Just shoot them out. They're just <laughs> everywhere. I mean, yeah. So I mean, that's one thing. They produce a lot of uh, they produce a lot of eggs, but um, also they're very very easy. Uh, they're very easy to take care of. You can um, you can keep them at room temperature, and you only need to feed them. Um, you need to like change their food every 10 to 14 days. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. We, oh had a, we had a fly problem in our kitchen and we thought that putting the bins outside would fix it. But if they can go 15 days without eating. No, it's, they can't go 15 days without eating. You just, <laughs> you just give them, a, like, you give them food that lasts them for 15 days. Ah, uh, okay. And then oh, you just swap it out. That makes sense. So like, they're super easy to take, uh, to take care of. You just, you have them again, you can have them in, um, you can have them on what they're called, Petri dishes. Mm. Uh, and the great thing about them is that they've got all these sort of different, uh, they've got genes that can um, change things very easily. So you've got um, very obvious genes for eye color. So you can study sort of genetics um, with them. And flies. Yeah, with, with flies. Oh my God. You've got white eyes and red eyes. There's lots of different, so there's lots of different ways that we can, um, that we can study them. And they live for a month. Like you can, you can get through a lot of generations mm. in a really short time. And that's the key thing because you can study um, changes over gener you can study generational changes you can study a lot of stuff using these organisms um including sort of growth and development and all and all of and all of those things um it's it's they're, they're both fantastic but on twitter uh they kind of 
the, the people that studied with Drosophila and the people that studied with C. elegans, yeah. so the people that studied with flies and the people that studied with worms, were having a proper war. About <laughs> what? <laughs> Because the head of this, uh, the, the head of this, uh, science so beef. this guy, Michael, Michael Eisen, like he's, he's in a fairly powerful position. Um, it's sort of in the science world yeah. in terms of like King running a journal. Worms. Well, it, it starts with running a journal. So people that were, um, people that were, uh, worm researchers were like, this is a really dangerous thing for you to have done because you can, you'll be affecting, you'll be affecting like the, the money that is given to worm research effectively. Mm. And there was one person that I saw that was, that's tried to equate it to, um, sexism, sexism, microaggressions, and uh, mm. racism, like quite literally, they were like, like they were like, um, this is this is just indic. Like if you do this, if you're allowed to make jokes about this, it's the same as making a racist joke in the office. And I'm like, I don't quite think so. No. I'm like, I don't get. Please don't sit. Comparison. No, exactly. I was like, please sit down. <laughs> and that wasn't the end of it. Michael Eisen went on to after that, um, literally just the other day, um, about two days ago, he got into another Twitter war, and this one, this is one that I love. Um, he got into a fight with someone that works at Elsevier, which is um, another uh, sort of big journal um, that published a lot of medical, uh, mm. that published a lot of medical um, papers. Mm. But they're all behind a paywall. And I run into that oh. whenever I'm researching. I run into that all the time. Like, you do. It's like, oh, do you want to do you want to read this article? Forty pounds for one day access. Oh, yeah, I swear that'd be the biggest cost on the podcast. It's got to be. It would, well, it, all the information behind because there's plenty of free information. But there's, like, there's lots of free information. There's, there's lots ways, behind a paywall. There's ways to find you your way around paywalls. Pay for stuff like exactly. That. So that's kind of what Michael Eisen was saying. That was, it was the case of like, if you're hiding it, if you're you've got such a massive paywall here, that's a problem. Mm. And the people at Elsevier were like, oh, we've got all these programs. Like patients can access it, and you can access it with this and that. And Michael Eisen was like, yeah, but it's not free, is it? Like you're, yeah. like it's it's <laughs> it's ludicrously expensive. So I I don't know. I've I just heard about Michael Eisen last week, and already I'm quite a big fan of. I like the guy. He's very good. He seems he seems cool. Yeah. So I mean, switched on. If you're interested, if you're interested at all in science, this th these kind of feuds happen quite often. I think there's lots of there's lots of tensions between different sort of brand. You don't you think of scientists as being maybe one big I, group? Seems so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, because like scientists fighting over Twitter. Just <laughs> well, the people that I found so, so very suddenly, my timeline was just like worms suck like that like it was <laughs> it was very suddenly worms are the worst and flies are the best and i was a little bit like yeah worms do suck you know worms do suck no but i mean both of them are absolutely fantastic it's just like fun little jokes between scientists that that was my story for this week that's what happened this week in science that's actually really interesting first off we asked the most important question what's the most important question the most important question is flies or worms and it seems yes. that our audience heated debate. It was a very heated debate, and I thought I'd, I'd put the question to to our audience. And yeah, as I've said, you guys are on the wrong side of history. You think that worms are better than flies, but um, that's that's really not the case. I think I, think I have more empathy for worms, so I'd go. I'd say we should test on flies. <laughs> <laughs> just as a sure. rule. Just as a rule. I mean, having worked with flies before, they're okay. They're cool. They've they're got like okay. yeah, they've got different colored eyes. They're the cat. <laughs> It's nice, you know, you you you, you, got, you can give them little personalities. The worms oh, are better. Not no. a fan of the worms, no. not a fan of the worms. No. No. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at SciGuysPod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs> <laughs>